Greetings. I hope you're all having a wonderful week. Welcome back to Mavanwinia's studio here in Leitrim's Iron Mountains. My name is Harriet, and today I am sharing another short Drawloween time lapse in my sketchbook. The Drawloween prompt list I'm working from is Mab's Drawloween Club, hosted by Pop Surrealist Mab Graves. This prompt was day 10, which. If you wish, you can view all of my completed Drawloween artworks on my Instagram, at Mavanwinia. I'll add the link in the description box below the video. For this drawing, working again in my mid-tone sketchbook, I begin to figure out the sketch with a white colouring pencil. I'm then building up and defining the sketch bit by bit, focusing on filling out one area at a time, continuously reshaping the sketch's line work and tonal values with an eraser. I'm using predominantly the Derwent black and white tonal colouring pencil set for the main bulk of this drawing, blending in brighter colours with Faber-Castell classic colouring pencils. I will also link my tools and materials below the video. As I mentioned, today's prompt is Witch, surely one of the most iconic Halloween characters with her pointy hat, black cat and trusty broom. Images of witches have appeared in various forms throughout history, stereotypically portrayed as wicked old women with green wrinkled skin, evil wart-nosed women huddling over cauldrons of boiling liquid, sometimes with long claw-like fingernails, hag-faced cackling beings riding through the skies on brooms. In pop culture, the witch has been portrayed as a benevolent, nose-twitching suburban housewife, an awkward teenager learning to control her powers, a trio of charm sisters battling the forces of evil. The real history of witches, however, is dark, and often for the witches, a deadly one. The concept of witchcraft and the belief in its existence have persisted throughout recorded history. They have been present or central at various times in many diverse forms across cultures and religions worldwide. Witches have often been seen outside of accepted cultures and faiths, and as a consequence, people historically often made witches feel unwanted in their societies. Most witches were thought to be pagans doing the devil's work. Many, however, were simply natural healers or so-called wise women, whose choice of profession was misunderstood. Early witches were people who practiced witchcraft, using magic spells, calling upon spirits or energies to help bring about change. Witch hysteria took hold in Europe during the mid 1400s when many accused witches confessed, often under torture, to a variety of wicked behaviors. Within a century, witch hunts were commonplace and most of the accused were executed by burning at the stake or hanging. Single women, widows and other women on the margins of society were especially targeted. Between the years 1500 and 1660, up to 80,000 suspected witches were put to death in Europe alone. Germany had the highest witchcraft execution rate, while Ireland had the lowest. The publication of Malleus Mel Ficurum, if I pronounce that right, it was written by two respected German Dominicans in 1486, translated as The Hammer of the Witches. It was essentially a guide on how to identify, hunt and interrogate the witches. Malleus Melficurum labelled witchcraft as heresy and it quickly became the authority for Christian faiths to flush out witches living amongst them. For more than a hundred years the book sold more copies than any other book in Europe aside from the Bible. Modern day witches of the Western world still struggle to shake these historical stereotypes. Most practice Wicca, their motto being harm none. Wiccans strive to live a peaceful, tolerant and balanced life in harmony with nature and humanity. There are many different types of Wicca and witchcraft. The most famous perhaps is Gardnerian Wicca, a religion founded in the late 1940s by Gerald Gardner, who was born in Lancashire in the UK. He was an anthropologist who wrote a lot of works about the ancient Celts, but he was also a fiction writer. Gerald Gardner coined the term Wicca, originally spelling it with one C from the old word for wise. He revamped a lot of the old rituals from historical witchcraft and older faiths to make them more accessible to his contemporary audience. Witchcraft within Wicca is seen as a tool for creating positive change to better oneself and one's environment. Witch is an interchangeable term for men or women, where the misconception of warlock being a male witch is incorrect. A warlock is actually a term meaning oathbreaker, the witch's oath being the Wiccan reed. Bide the Wiccan law ye must, in perfect love and perfect trust, 
Eight words the Wiccan read fulfill, and it harm none, do as he will. Least in self-defense it be, ever mind the rule of free. Follow this in mind of heart, merry meet and merry part. By the Wiccan law you must, the first line of the Wiccan read meaning, if you don't do this we will not consider you our kin. In perfect love and perfect trust is a statement of trust to fulfill the eight words and it harm none do as you will. Basically stating, if you don't believe it's harming anyone, do as you feel. Never mind the rule of free. The rule of free is about karma, the threefold law, meaning any energy we send out to the universe returns to us threefold, whether it's good or bad. A belief in witchcraft is that we exist in four levels. One in the physical world, two in the emotional, three in the spiritual. Emotional meaning you're ever radiating energy and spiritual your connection to the divine. The fourth is magical, and magic being the interaction between the other three. Wiccans worship nature and believe this grants them greater power of magic. Part of this nature worship includes celebrating the eight Sabbaths of the Celtic year, referred to as the turning of the wheel. A lot of Wiccan faith is about cycles, including the idea that when spells come into fruition, it is believed that you should pass good deeds along to another to close the circle and seal the spell. On the tarot, a divination practice closely associated with witchcraft, the card of the wheel shows a wheel with a sphinx at the top where it says, I rule, and around the wheel the serpent, I have ruled, and then a dog, I will rule again. Closing the circle on a spell seals in the level of goodness the spells obtained before the wheel can turn again to the serpent, I have ruled. A new circle is cast for a new spell. Circle casting is a ritual preparing the space for spell work cultivating energy for your new intention. The witch's broom in Wicca is referred to as a besom. It is used to sweep away negative energies or astral dirt, especially before cultivating new energies of intent for spellcraft used in magic and ritual. In Wicca, the besom is considered sacred to the goddess and god and promotes fertility of persons, lands and new ideas through cleansing away negative energy influences, making it protective. Those accused of witchcraft in Europe were thought to be riding on brooms, but they were just likely townsfolk that were spotted jumping around on brooms to promote fertility. The traditional witch's besom is made with an ash handle, birch twigs and willow binding. The practice is to thank the spirits of the land, the plants and the ground where you got the materials from. Many modern pagan weddings or hand fastenings include jumping of a broom. Traditionally, brooms were waved over the heads of the marrying couples to ward off spirits. The couple would jump over the broom at the end of the ceremony. Jumping over the broom symbolized overcoming their first obstacle together. As a protective tool, laid across the threshold, the besom can prevent spells and negative energy sent to the house and to those residing within it. A broom placed under the pillow is said to bring pleasant dreams and guard you while you sleep. Today, witchcraft is widely accepted as a personal spiritual path. It's also about being crafty. Creativity, by creating what you need for your spells, gathering materials and putting the energy into making these things is cultivating the energy for the spell along with the act of going out to nature to gather herbs, plants or other natural materials for spellcraft. Where Wiccan practice has an established structure, it holds the spirit of creativity. A more modern term in witchcraft is eclectic witch, where the spiritual path of the witch is a more personal fusion of whatever beliefs feel right for you as the individual and including them in your practice, an ever-evolving set of ideas that resonate with you, ideas that find harmony together, make sense and feel right on a personal level, be them as it may from various contrasting faiths and teachings. Like any form of spirituality or religion, witchcraft is about faith, faith that your spell will work. It would be pointless to cast a spell with the intention being, oh, you have to prove something to me. Rather, go into the spell believing that you are actually harnessing the energies to make magic happen. Witchcraft is a practice that takes practice. Here on my artwork, I have drawn this little witch with nods of a contemporary alternative gothic witchy style, with her bright shiny magenta and black hair. I drew a classic little black familiar on the brim of her hat. The folklore surrounding black cats varies from culture to culture. In Scottish folklore, it is said that a strange black cat's arrival to the home signifies prosperity. 
In Celtic mythology, a fairy known as the Cat's Eye takes the form of a black cat, sometimes with a single white patch on its chest. On Halloween, or the Celtic New Year of Samhain, it is believed that the Cat's Eye would bless any house that left a saucer of milk out for it to drink. The houses that did not would be cursed of having all their cow's milk dry up. Legend has it that this spectral cat haunts the Scottish Highlands. The Cat's Eye also occurs in Irish stories. Some common folklore suggests that the Cat's Eye was not not a fairy, but a witch that could transform into a cat nine times. Black cats are also considered good luck in Britain. It is believed that a lady who owns a black cat will have many suitors. In the UK and Ireland, there's a superstition that if a black cat walks towards someone, or if it crosses your path, it will bring you good fortune. But if it walks away, it will take the good luck with it. And if a black cat walks onto a ship and then walks off again, the ship is doomed to sink on its next trip. I like the simplicity of this illustration, and the subtle transition in colour in her hair I think is pretty. I added a white glow around the edges of the witch with a white pencil. I feel it animates her character somehow, and lifts her off the tanned page without adding too much of a background. This was a quick little drawing, which took me about an hour in real time to finish. I hope you've enjoyed it. We are coming to the end of my time lapse now, so if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon for another video. Bye bye